This story is about service, what it means to serve, and keep on serving in the face of mortal danger. The destruction of animals most dear to you and the cruelest loss that a parent could suffer. It is the story of Charlie Nimpere Nkuna, who all his life served the Kruger National Park. Kruger, as the national park is known, dominates South Africa's eastern border, covering 20,000 square kilometers. It is bigger than many small countries. Kruger is a wilderness managed by humankind. It is no untamed wilderness. It is controlled by conservation science, technology, and manpower. Yet, to the casual visitor, it may seem as if the park belongs entirely to nature. Kruger was a colonial institution. Images of the time often positioned black rangers as exotic background extras. The names of these rangers are unknown their stories unwritten. But the story of Charlie and Kuna lives on, and it speaks for all his long-forgotten colleagues. Charlie was born in 1930. He began to work for the Kruger National Park in 1948 and rose to the rank of sergeant. Military discipline and training helped rangers to defeat poachers and to survive the dangers of the bush. Uniforms were important and rank was taken extremely seriously. Lani 
emlengena ifaka masandazi la wathi ngiwabela Charlie has been receiving a pension for some time and has invested it in his cattle. Yeah, na ela kutsama kato umtamela. Ati tele shivale ti se ti file se go sala hafunyana. Ati tele to humula. Niku yiba amakhamba bayibe ngopho. Se ti sele nyana ati ati encha teti senyalo ti tlelele se ti kola ka 18. The Nkuna family kraal used to be inside Kruger Park. Zebra and Impala used to graze beside the cattle. Kruger was a tough environment for cattle, but the family herd did well and the Nkunas prospered. Then tragedy struck the family and struck again. Eventually, the family was forced to leave Kruger never to return. But today, Charlie in his retirement is patrolling his old grounds with a new recruit, Corporal Tommy Mohokani, who has been chosen as the guardian of his memories. And Matsafeni and Luli was a powerful and much revered Swati chief, murdered mysteriously around 1890. His name lives on as Mdluli is a common local surname. Charlie played a key part in tracking down Ingluli's grave and gave it its only signpost. Yeah. Okay. Charlie helped to map out the region's historic transport routes. And pushing Okay. Oh, I'm 
Today, headlines about poachers are commonplace. Masses of rhinos have been slaughtered by the new breed of poacher, equipped with helicopters, killing for the international trade in rhino horn. Rhino poachers are the foot soldiers of extinction. They undermine the first and oldest purpose of Africa's national parks, which is to protect game animals from total massacre. In the 19th century, South Africa's wild animals were hunted as never before by waves of settlers with horses and guns. The quacha and the blue antelope were wiped off the face of the earth. By the turn of the century, even abundant species like the springbok and impala had vanished from much of their range. As a result, the Cape Colony and later the Transvaal Republic began to create parks where game would be protected. The Transvaal government's pro-protection lobby mapped out a park between the Crocodile and Sabi rivers. Over the coming century, this park would grow fourfold and would be named the Kruger National Park in honor of Republican President Paul Kruger. Just a year after the proclamation of the park, Paul Kruger's government was forced into the Anglo-Boer War. When the war ended, the park fell under British administration. Its new warden was a soldier, Major James Stevenson Hamilton. He had trained at Sandhurst, Britain's premier school for army officers, and had fought against the Boers in Natal. As park warden, Stevenson Hamilton kept on fighting. He began the park's never-ending war against poaching, prosecuting every poacher he caught, including even senior white policemen. Charlie and Kuna too has fought in this tradition against all comers. <laughs> Charlie and Kuna spent his boyhood in this part of Kruger. The Nkuna family homestead was deep inside the boundaries of the park. Here they grew crops. <laughs> The Nkuna family also kept cattle in the park. In the 1930s, this was still permitted. Mm. 
In Africa, communities and their cattle have coexisted with lions and other wildlife for centuries. But according to commercial beef and dairy interests, cattle that had mixed with other wildlife were considered a danger due to the threat of contamination. Charlie and Tommy are standing on a ridge of a mass grave. Below their feet lie the bones of scores of cattle, the cattle of Charlie's childhood. The cattle killings of 1939 shattered African homesteads across the region. Foot and mouth disease had been detected in two herds within the park which were suspected to have mixed with wildlife. The government vets responded by destroying most of the region's cattle. Within Kruger, the vets killed thousands. In the so-called native reservations beyond, they killed tens of thousands, regardless of whether or not they were actually infected. <laughs> Charlie finally cites the species he once helped to save. Rhino were once regular game for hunters, including for future British Prime Minister Winston Churchill. But rhino populations were decimated by waves of epidemics. In the Kruger region, both the black and white rhino went extinct. Only in the 60s did rhino return to Kruger through translocation from other reserves. Translocation demands intense teamwork and long hours on the road. The very first field ranger selected for Kruger's first rhino translocation team was Charlie in Kuna. Hi. Lani Mkombo, Elau Shambakako. See what Ranzango Pumatia fed. From early in his career, Charlie was noted as somebody special. The Nkuna name carried weight at Kruger, and in particular the name Alphus Nkuna. Alphus was Charlie's uncle. Stories are still told about Alphus, how he was attacked by a leopard and slew it with his penknife, how poachers on hearing that Alphus was after them would give themselves up, and how the head ranger would never appoint new staff without first consulting Alphus. Alphus died at aged 85, still a park employee. The night before his funeral, at the hut where his body lay, all his colleagues showed their respects by sleeping outside the hut. An ox was slaughtered for the funeral feast. Its hide was folded around Alphus's body. The 1970s were the years of deepest apartheid, but Alphys' funeral was attended by all. 
Reports tell how bush-hardened white rangers wept openly. Hilda Stevenson Hamilton, widow of the park's founding warden, was among the mourners. In accordance with custom, the buttons were cut off the tunic of Alphys's uniform, and the uniform was placed on his coffin, followed by his hat. El fasi anin kokalu kulu kantiro ala pak uti rengop da bona uti re 50 years yeah el fas eh le tuna la kelil eh ai fanele shavile ribe se va kutsiketani talungis okay yeah nge afuna ngelele nge afuna kulivusa le le imbokoti yakhe asila likwayi ngalo mina ofuthi lokho ndirime ndiphunile Undi Jonesi sentiro, enkwa wandi Jonesi sana kufamba la nobe, enkwa kandi Jonesi sana enkwa. Lesi asiri la kelandi zela ni shari ni vtumza shari saku, fanya shari shanya njani, shita meli wanja. Bawa elwe ye, loku ni sosi ariko nda bona ni vana vana ni vatu kulva ni vana Jonesi sosa sekangu. 1992 was a significant year in Charlie's life. Mozambique, on Kruger's eastern border, had suffered almost three decades of civil war. In 1992, the fighting finally began to wind down. Peace came to Mozambique. But the war had caused desperate poverty. Refugees kept coming through Kruger. Some were killed by lions. Sensational reports suggested that Kruger was infested by man-eaters. The truth, however, was simpler. Lions will take whatever strays into their path, especially the vulnerable young, who made for easy targets. <laughs> Uh, Sir, it So, okay, good Kerego to Tumiwa, a looks of Tetani, Kulanzua Bangwana Balungo Gascucos, but a Fagalicia Shagurila, she take a lingy to miss, say Tangalalia, say by Dubula, by Tai, so go that do de la Pinar, I read two, and a farm by Jigeles of a Chabawan, say farm by Lava, Rolela Marambu, the Samaramba, do de la Pinar. Looking a 
Yeah, I've been going out to the steps since we were mama yali. Now we're going to see what we have to do. We are now all alone. Kurangem for two weeks. Ah, we must balance and we're not going to start away. But yeah, because when you come in, I call. You get balance in the sala and the mark. You go and mark the air quality. Se nilo ansato ame. Se ndi lava stand. Ndash kuma kola. Se ndi ya kala ya. Yemfano ame la oje zeva elu anga kola. Ebo banga tabarwa tsongo bata tsamalani inkuwa boba Jones. Vous pouvez vous dire que vous Kuna lesunga omelele shaba ba akaranza kut. Lepse nenga sujonza kumekush kumakata tana kuna chali. In this world, there are people who are the models of dedication and commitment. And tonight, Sand Parks honors one of these special pillars whose life is intertwined with the Kruger National Park. It is an honor for me to announce the winner of tonight's penultimate award, the Lifetime Contribution Award. And this award goes to Baba Charlie Nguna. Sungule Gubita, Abita Rababa, Babita Elfas, Seva Vita Melema, Baguevan Lava, Abake Pavin Gate, Seven Divita Babita, Neva, which Charlie Kuna. To Baba Charlie Kuna. The twenty two in the second group. Eh, Vamos a 